In December 2016, the GASB issued an invitation to comment to gather feedback on three alternatives to the information that is now presented in governmental fund financial statements. Near-term financial resources, short-term financial resources, and long-term financial resources. This is the sixth in a series of videos available on the GASB website, gasb.org, explaining what the invitation to comment is all about. Other videos explain why the existing approach, current financial resources, needs to be replaced, describe each of the three alternative approaches currently being considered, and discuss additional topics that are in the invitation to comment. The three alternatives to current financial resources presented in the invitation to comment are different in significant ways. This video highlights the major differences between the three approaches as well as some of the benefits that they share. The three approaches differ in terms of the length of the period beyond the end of the fiscal year, that is the cutoff point for which assets and liabilities are reported. The near-term approach reports assets and liabilities normally due relatively soon after the end of the fiscal year, likely 60 to 90 days. Assets and liabilities under the short-term approach are normally due during a government's operating cycle the subsequent year. The assets and liabilities reported in the long-term approach are not limited to a specific period beyond fiscal year end. Although all three approaches would report financial resources, their different time frames would result in the reporting of a progressively broader set of assets and liabilities as you move from the near term to short term and to long term. All three approaches would report cash and investments. They also would report receivables, but the near term approach would be limited to receivables normally expected to be due within 60 to 90 days after fiscal year end and the short-term approach to those normally expected to be due within the next year. Both the short-term and long-term approaches would report prepaid items and in inventory, but not the near-term approach, which defines financial resources in a way that excludes items that are not expected to be converted to cash. None of the approaches would report capital assets, such as buildings and roads in the governmental funds. All three approaches would report payables, but the near-term approach would be limited to those normally due within 60 to 90 days after fiscal year end, and the short-term approach to those normally due within the next year. The amounts of outstanding bonds and notes and pension liabilities reported under the near and short-term approaches would be limited. The long-term approach would report all operating liabilities, but not debt that finance the government's capital assets. Outflows of resources reported would include cash payments made during or shortly after the fiscal year under the near-term approach. Outflows under the short-term approach would be reported as transactions occur and cash is paid during the fiscal year or normally expected to be paid in the next year. Long-term approach outflows would be reported as transactions occur regardless of whether cash changes hands. All three approaches would report salaries and wages and payments such as compensated absences as outflows with each approach adjusting the payments for changes in related liabilities as those liability balances are measured under that approach. The near-term approach would report goods and services, including inventory, as outflows as the goods and services are purchased, but the other two approaches would report outflows as the goods and services are used. All three approaches would report outflows for interest, but limited to payments normally expected to be paid in no more than 60 to 90 days after fiscal year end for the near-term approach, and no more than one year for the short-term approach. All three would report outflows for principal payments on long-term borrowings, but the near-term approach would report just payments made during the year, the short-term approach would report as outflows of resources payments due in the next year, and the long-term approach would report only capital-related principal payments. Lastly, each approach would report outlays to purchase or construct capital assets as outflows of resources. 
Under the near-term approach, an inflow of resources would be recorded when a government acquires financial resources that meet two criteria. One, they are available for spending during or relatively soon after the fiscal year, and two, they do not come with a corresponding liability. Reporting of inflows under the other two approaches would be recorded as the transactions occur, with the short-term approach limited to those in which cash is received during the fiscal year or due to be received in the next year. The three approaches share at least four characteristics that retain the usefulness of the existing information in the governmental funds or improve upon that information. First, they are useful for budgetary analysis because they retain the fund structure of governmental funds. However, information under the near-term approach generally is more closely aligned with the budgetary time perspective than the other two approaches. Second. They focus solely on financial resources, though the set of financial resource-related assets, liabilities, inflows, and outflows broadens as one moves from the near-term to the short-term to the long-term approach. It should be noted as well that there is no universally accepted definition of what constitutes a financial resource. And third, all three approaches would provide guidance for complex transactions that is absent in the existing standards for the governmental funds. And fourth, the sample financial statements illustrated for each approach present same-page reconciliations that explain how the information in the governmental funds differs from the information in the government-wide statements, which research has found to be very useful. Each approach would improve upon the clarity of the financial statements with more accurate and specific titles and descriptions. You can read more about the three approaches in Chapter 2 of the Invitation to Comment, which can be downloaded from gasby.org. Your input is critical to our process. Please review the Invitation to Comment and share your feedback by the March 31st deadline. Also, please consider participating in one of the public hearings or user forums. More information can be found on the GASB website, gasby.org.